Hey, Internet. It's Paul. It's Matt, the Dork Lords. We are here talking about Maniac, Maniac. Last time. Yeah. <laughs> Maniac on Netflix, season one, episodes nine and ten. So we're wrapping up the season yes. and probably the series. Probably. Um, as far as we know, there's not a season two of this thing. No, then it's uh, limited, se- limited, limited to one. Ooh, no. Uh, so, yes, episode nine entitled Utengata. Yes. And episode ten entitled Option C. Uh, so, yes, Utengata, the name of the episode nine. We are told, and I didn't look this up, so I'll just take them at their word. Go ahead, take them at their word. That it's some Icelandic term meaning something is amiss. So, they, that's what they mentioned in the. In the, uh, in, oh, the, in the episode. in the episode, they, they said it has t- two meanings. Though, yeah, they? it had two meanings. Yeah. <laughs> I for, actually forget what the other one was. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I recall personal. the second one being rather bullshitty. Yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> and that's why I was like, it probably means something is amiss. Uh, so, um, yes, Utengata. All right, so the reason there's an Icelandic term, and actually Utengata comes up early, like in episode eight or so. They mentioned Utengata so, is like yeah. a password or something. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. So they, they throw that in there. So this is, again, in Owen's mind, mm. but it also, as it turns out, is uh, in uh, Annie's mind. Yes. They're back together. They're back together. So they were apart. Yes. The episodes, while well, uh, we had a commenter say that uh, they thought maybe episodes seven and eight were some of the best of the season, and I, and I agree that it was kind of hitting its stride. The the limiting factor of the the Lord of the Rings and the mob... Uh, scenarios were that we didn't have Annie and Owen together. No, that was limited. Um, and so they're back together they're for back together. nine and ten. Um, the main scenario that is occurring in episode nine is that Owen is this Icelandic guy named Snorri. Yes. Who found an alien, yeah. injured, nursed it back to health. Very much like his falcon thing. Yeah, Basically, true, the alien true. is the falcon. Uh, you know, he he nursed the falcon back to health, uh, and then it was killed horribly. Yeah. But he wasn't responsible for the death of the falcon. His brother was. True. Although maybe you could say by guilt he was thinking, oh, they, I let the falcon eat his gerbil, and that's what <laughs> caused its death. I don't know. You know, like like an indirect, much like this, indirectly he mm. leads to mm, the alien's true. death. It is one of the things yeah, he's he's on that. trial for something that really wasn't. I mean, he put a glass of wine, he put a gimlet down on top of a speaker. That I don't think you could say, oh, well, you should have assumed then that someone would explode because yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's yeah. not, he didn't murder the alien. No, no. But in, in the context of his dream, he yeah. is being held responsible. Yes. The whole world, in fact, the whole universe yes. is holding him responsible for putting his gimlet down yes. on the speaker, which fell over, electrified the cord, and then when the alien was going to give his speech of love and forgiveness, <laughs> it uh, shot, blew it up, basically. So you see blue goo go everywhere. We never see the alien, we see it. We never actually do, no. I think it, that's a, probably a good thing. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know that we needed to see the puppet. <laughs> blair, 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 I bring you love. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> But uh, Snorri, by the way, his voice is... It's done for comedic effect. Yes. Snorri's voice is like just... He, does, he says it's like, oh, I have all these different types of parents. and the, But yeah, yes. he, so it's not Icelandic. It's just like this... Right. Um, so it's it's being silly right off. Like right off the bat, you're like, okay, this is not serious. No, it's not. And there's an alien that blows up after having a gimlet spilled on a speaker. Yes, so again, not yes, serious. Yes. <laughs> in the middle of the hearings where everybody's blaming uh, Snorri for, uh, you know, doing, um, killing aliens. And, and, and basically, the this his alien race is apparently going to come and destroy the planet because we killed their their buddy. Yep. Although, yeah, um, it's later revealed that that's just a ruse. According to Annie, yes. So Annie shows up. I mean, you know. And we believe it in, yeah. our, in terms it's, of the... It's not even real. It's not so. real. Yeah. It's whatever he's... <laughs> ah, what the, whatever ooh, it said. Now we real. get down to the gist. Yes. Ah, mm. Mm. <laughs> She's a highly placed operative, also with a, a comedically Southern accent. Yes. I think she's trying to do Texas, mm. but comedically. Mm. So, um, 
And she's like, oh, yeah, the aliens were going to come for us all along. You actually helped us out. You know, you, you put everybody on alert earlier than they would have been otherwise. So um, I'm here to get you out of here. Right. And so they proceed to shoot a ton of a people. A ton. Uh, and one thing they say is these are they're demons. They're inner demons. So you know, uh, so the killing one of them has demons. a lot of demons. So she was like, "You must have a lot." Plan, plan, yeah, yeah, plan, yeah. Or whatever. Um, uh, so yeah, it's uh, it's an over the top, absurd action sequence with a lot of blood. Um, it it kind of reminded me of maybe even like. Uh, Oh boy! No, I just said it. Now. Leftovers, uh, like the Kingsman, the the church scene. It's not as oh, well choreographed. Yes, 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 yes. yes, yes, it's, yes. The choreography is a little uh, leaves to be desired, but it's it's that same level of yes. tracking through a hallway yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. just shoot, 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 headshot, yeah. headshot, headshot. Um, and so yeah, lots and lots of people get uh, get whacked by Annie specifically, but also Owen contributes. Yes, yeah, she gives him a gun. He's like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. Oh, I'm snorty. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, so that happens. Meanwhile, in the real world, um, Mantle Ray and uh, Azumi are trying to fix the problems of the uh, depressed Supercomputer, along with the well, they don't initially uh, think that there are problems. Actually, it, uh, you know, um, what is it? Right. Uh, it's, uh, the Greta Mandel Ray is telling them that uh, she's depressed and therefore yeah. she's a danger. Shut down the program. They're like, look, everything's uh, fine. Everything's fine. Yeah. She's like, no, everything is not fine. And uh, and she gets to have an "I told you so" moment uh, she later. She does. Yes, later <laughs> after uh, Azumi um, freaks out. And or at least feels threatened because uh, Mandalay is suggesting that uh, she's being protective of her child, and because um, she's the one who created it, basically, based on uh, Dr. Mandalay's uh, brain scan. Um, but she rejects that. She kisses, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the yeah. younger Man- Mandalay there, and says, just "You're just jealous," and walks away and leaves, uh, you know, the son and the mother to to have a confrontation. Uh, and he uh, go. He has a psychosomatic blindness. Yes, <laughs> which is also played for comedic effects. Yes, he spends the rest of the episode looking the wrong way when talking to people, yes. and they keep trusting him to like flip levers yeah. that he can't see. You know, um, and so it's yeah, it's it's silly. It's yes. done as a yes. And he, I think his his line is uh, talking to his mom. I've been blinded by your toxic love. <laughs> <laughs> I have to kill my <laughs> simulated mother. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, there's a lot of a lot of silliness happening yes. on in both worlds, uh, <laughs> in both worlds. Yeah. Yes. Um, and so, uh, in fact, oh yeah, yeah. So they're now worried. They become worried. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have a bunch of McMurphys here because yes. the place is overheating. There's a fire. It looks like Greta, the supercomputer, is trying to. Kill them basically. You know, I don't know if that's the ultimate goal, but the side effect of whatever she's doing is she does gonna, appear like it might kill them, or at least yeah. you know make them like the others. I like guess brain dead the, the previous yeah catatonic catatonic. So there become there comes this race in in the real world and in the uh, simulated world to uh, keep the catatonic states from happening. Yes, save. The people save the people. Yeah, even as uh, Azumi suggests that uh, having a bunch of McMurphys <laughs> might be worth it right. to save the work. Uh, <laughs> Mantle Ray's like, no. Yeah, he doesn't even really appear to consider it. Actually, he right. Just sort of Which you would think maybe he would, but I mean, you know, he doesn't stop because he, you know, he's the one responsible for their yeah, death. So yeah. you know, but she, Azumi, you're right, is more like, eh. Yeah. The work's important. Let's just let a few people go to a flatline. <laughs> um, so there, uh, he decides he's going to uh, destroy his simulated mother. Yes. Uh, and he does so. By the end of the episode, they pull the wires and they kind of do like a howl. Yes. Almost like a... Yeah. They don't do the... But it's more or less... Yes, yes, yes. Um, meanwhile, in the simulated world... Owen's brother comes to uh, Jed. To well, not Jed, but 
I mean, it's the yes. simulated version. Yes, of yes, yes. Yes, right. The the fantasy brother comes to uh, help. So um, once, uh, what was it? Well, he had a moment like uh, Annie had, where she, you know, realized, oh, this is fake. This yeah, world. yeah. He kind of comes to this moment of, oh, I need to save. Things bad things are happening. I don't remember the exact moment yeah. when it comes, but yes, you're right. He stops being Snorri. Yeah, and he's back to being Owen. Yeah, but in the simulated world. Yes, and so uh, yes, yeah, so his Grimson, I think is what he called him, but his fantasy version of his brother is like, okay, this is what you've been training for. You need to solve this Rubik's cube. Oh yeah. And if you solve the... the Rubik's cube, it will restore control function to the computer. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and so they have a conversation. It's like a room screen with no colors. It yeah. Was just metal. Yeah. And I was like, you know, and I guess there were times when the. It, it would, would light, light up, up red if you got all yeah. the things right. But you're right. It was a, yeah, a monochrome Rubik's Cube. Done. <laughs> Finished. Uh, <laughs> yeah, oh, sorry. There. There. Now, now it's done. <laughs> you got it that time. Um, so, uh, so, yes, he restores. Controls they get the the, temp, the atmospheric controls back in the yes. real world, theoretically thanks to Owen working with the yes and 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 in fact Greta the computer gives like a uh, you know number one saves the day or yeah, something yeah, like that yeah, you know? yeah, and yeah. he was he was the number one guy anyway um, yeah. so but meanwhile uh, Annie. Also stops being the secret agent and realizes she's Annie, and decide uh, meets with with Greta, the, the computer version of Greta, who had given her this thing of like, you can stay here forever. Yes, and it's like I don't want to stay here forever. Right. So, but why? Uh, and she like basically is like, no, take me to my sister. I want to say goodbye, and I'm not, I don't want to stay here. Yes. So they take this little elevator ride, and it opens up. It looks like it opens up into that little miniature, the miniature uh, garden area that they've got in the in the real world. You know that oh. that little anyway. And that's what that's what I got out oh. of it because later you see Owen full sized Owen talking to her in miniature form. Uh. I think it's because in the simulated world uh. they're doing a simulated version of the simulation. Anyway, okay, it's a, it's it's Inception. Simulation of a simulation inside a simulation. So uh, Annie gets to say goodbye to her sister. Yes. The thing that she was going to do yes. a few episode ago but didn't is now doing. Um, and so, yeah, they have, a, they have a farewell moment. Annie gets uh, very teary-eyed, as does Greta the supercomputer. Mm. Um, and she effectively says goodbye. Yeah, like it, it, it happened. And she kind of sits there and is, uh, I guess, technically free of supercomputers control at that sure. point. Uh, she's just Annie in the simulation, waiting to get woken up. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so um, we'll come back to that because I, I we'll talk about the Annie farewell moment. So I, I thought it. I wasn't uh, moved by it the way I think the show wanted me to be moved by I it. I was. I don't know. Were you were? I, no? I think I was satisfied with it. Okay. Yeah, I think I was. Um, I think. But we'll, 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 we'll just keep going to the recap real fast and we'll come back to that. Okay. So that's basically episode nine. Episode ten. Uh, oh, yeah, they do one of those. And here's that same event again for you because they're waking up and they're like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and uh, one of the better moments uh, that I really appreciated was when the uh, everybody's waking up and Mantle Ray and Azumi are just thrilled that they're alive <laughs> <laughs> it's like they're coming off of like a it's like they're coming off of an airplane that like sank at sea or something because it's like it's like a oh my god congratulations yes. oh you survived oh congrats oh we're so glad it was Yay. a success Yay. we succeeded <laughs> followed later by sign this NDA make sure you sign the NDA yeah. make sure you sign the NDA <laughs> make sure you remember um, that you're under an NDA yeah that's what it is that's remember true right. they're already right they're not to sign it remember it um, but the the sheer joy and elation that Justin Thoreau exhibits yes. at the fact that his subjects just lived is pretty funny. Yeah. It's, it's it's well done. And one of the sub the, the condom subjects is like, yeah. 
wait, were, were we were we supposed to die or anything? <laughs> Is that a, was that a real thing? Anyway, um, that was very funny. Well done. Um, and suppose theoretically they're healed. I mean, he says, and you're healed. Yeah. Okay, I mean, they got through the trial. They got through the experiment, let's put it that way. And... Yeah, presumably they all went through... I mean, there were cathartic moments that they both... That, that, the two that we saw had. And we could... So. They, we actually saw scenes from the others when they were riding the elevator. Mm. Uh, we saw... Mm, I, don't know. I forgot what they were, but like Condom Guy was in a room oh, filled yeah, with stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember that now, was yeah. Like so swimming. So presumably they all had some sort of cathartic moments yeah. that should have helped them with whatever, you know. I mean, we don't find out if the one guy is still eating things, but... Right, <laughs> right. Um, we don't get closer. But we know? do... I mean, you could make the case that the experiment worked. Yeah. Because both Annie and Owen kind of deal with their past yes. trauma. Yes, yes. Owen writes a letter to Olivia. We don't see Olivia, but no. he writes a I'm sorry letter. Yeah. And we see him about to send it off before he... Uh, Stands up for himself, does not lie for the family. Uh, the family is, uh, well, Jed is uh, as vindictive as he said he'd be. Yeah, yeah he's, he's not. <laughs> Gets uh, Owen put into a mental institution, which you called. Like, uh, So I said, I think we both got part of this right. So a couple episodes ago, we were theorizing what happened at the end. And I said, well, I think the, I think the trial has to come back around. Like he has to, like that'll be like this ending beat for him. And he'll probably stand up for himself. And then you said, "Yeah, but then won't Jed put him in jail?" Uh, mm -hmm. And and it actually hadn't I hadn't thought of that. Like, well, he'll find a way to not go to jail, right? It's like, nope, no, no. And it wasn't jail; it was a mental institution. But yes. uh, you could yes. anyway. So, um, so yeah, um, he, he. We'll talk about the trial too, because uh, I had some issues with that. But but basically, he stands up for himself. It's like, nope, that guy in the video is my brother. Yeah. Um, so I'm uh, not a liar. Uh, the family uh, loses their their case and yes. probably has to pay a whole ton of money. Um, so he's put into an institution. Um, while he's there, uh, and so you can debate again whether he deserves to be there or not. I think mm, you could. Like he did have the blip, you know, a decade ago or whatever. Yeah, so but not the one that he's being imprisoned for. No. But I'm just saying, in other words, he has a history of some mental, yes, emotional problems. Correct. Is he cured now? Maybe. I mean, but he's he's fine with being. Yeah, we there. don't see like uh, the the his his delusion about his brother or the brother that did was never was after that. Mm. We don't see that. Okay, good good um, call. Good call. So you know, it didn't seem like we had moments of his. Uh, having trouble with reality after he went through that process. Um, he meets with his, uh, the I'm sure the assigned therapist yeah. for the day thing, yeah. and he mentions, he's talking about Annie and not wanting to reconnect with her because he's worried that there's two options. One option is that she's not real and that if he goes back to Neverdine, Neverdine's not real. And none of that was actually real. Right. Uh, but he says the second option is worse. I don't think he goes into full details about it, but basically I believe what he's saying is in the second option, she is real, but he screws it up yeah. by Speaking pushing her away. Yeah, by, yeah, well, by being too obsessed and connected to her, um, causing her to want to push him away. Yeah. So um, they did have a little, a very fast farewell moment at the end of the experiment. Yeah. Uh, which he's like, hey, uh, don't worry. I won't be obsessed with you. Bye now. Yeah. And she's kind of still in shock, I think, from the whole experience of saying goodbye to her sister that she's kind of like, okay, bye. Well, probably. And then she lets him go. Probably and, partly because, um, well, she said she didn't think he was going to be like that. Um, but as I think is a natural reaction is somebody says, okay, I'm not going to be weird. Like, okay, thanks for not being weird. Maybe now yeah. I'm thinking that. You might still be weird, or this is weird you saying that, so thank you for the heads up or, about you being weird. Or even, oh, maybe this is your way of saying you're not really interested in me, or you, know, like, you don't want to be friends. They're like, hey, don't worry, I'm not going to hang around you. You know what I mean? Like, it's in other words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in other words, I'm leaving you, yeah. and I don't know. But yeah. for whatever reason, yes. it's a very brief parting. 
Yes. That neither feels particularly satisfied with, apparently. No, no. Um, so Annie, uh, having been healed, decides her step after having said goodbye to virtual Annie is to go and reconnect with the one living member of their family that she cares about. I guess her mom still could be alive. She doesn't know. I think right. they actually say, is her mom alive? I don't know. Yeah, she says she doesn't know. Um, so she goes back to talk to dad, who when we last saw him, heard him, he was in this, uh, the avoid, the isolation tank in the back of his uh, house. Adding to his uh, number of impressions, in addition to Apu, you can also do a man in a box. Man in a box, Hank Azaria. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I did see that his name on the side of the uh, avoid tank was Hank. So apparently that's her dad's name is Hank, and it's Hank Azaria. So she gives this kind of a fairly impassioned monologue to the box. Mm. Like, look, I need you in my life. Uh, get out of there. Yeah, I know that you, you know, uh, you liked our sister more than me. So you yeah. wished that she, I the was wrong really person the, died. Yep. I, she was the easy one. Yep. I'm the one with all the problems. And then we see that Hank Azaria, Hank, is talking to her from the window oh, behind ah, her. Because ah. he wasn't in the box. The box is just on for some reason. Um, and there's so many. I just remembered we, we didn't discuss this when we were talking about. It. Um, but in addition to sort of like, hey, I'm outside the box. Like, oh, you took my money? Eh, that's fine. Which it did seem like it was fine anyway. But to have to have him actually say, oh, you took my money. I'm fine with it. It's like, okay, who is this new character? Too bad you couldn't have had this conversation a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> he seems like he's pretty easy to talk to. He did. <laughs> there was a weird, yeah. So you would think like like a narrative moment that was just for the taking was she has come to some kind of a clarity about her life and the, her the way her family works, and so she uses that to help her dad, and so that she could come and say hey, you need to get out of that box. Let's start living again. And he gets out of the box, and it's a nice little look. But instead, he, he already he made that choice he, himself a long time yeah, ago, yeah. apparently, well, while she's in the experiment. Yeah, she's in the experiment. He decided, you know what? I need to get out of this box and be well-adjusted. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Apparently, and, that's much easier than it would might have seemed. Yeah. So, so they, <laughs> it undercut the scene a bit, because it's almost like he was helping her then. Which he could have been doing all along. Yeah, he yeah, could I don't know. know. I don't know why he wasn't doing it. Because he was all. really nice to her. Really he was nice. like, you know what? It wasn't, you're not, you're not the no. e hard one or whatever. No, and no. I love you just no. as much. And it's fine that you stole all my money. Yeah. And uh, hey, let's be cool together. Yep. And so, so it was just like, a, well, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it was an odd, it was almost like a, Ladies and gentlemen, Hank Azaria! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was almost like he was her father buddy or something. You know? Yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. good bit. You know, like Interesting the, theory. Yeah, you know. Well, not the theory. It's like, but it's but it was played as yeah. that way. It's it like, was, but you're like, right. Like, here are the things that you need to hear, so I'm going to say that. Whatever problems I have, they don't really mean any much, anything. Yeah. It's like... Why would you want to get into the box in the first place? You seem pretty well adjusted. The oh, why? That, Don't even talk about that. Yeah, and the fact that he somehow, independent of anything else, got out of the box and yes. figured his own, yeah. like, did he go through an experiment? Um, so she has mended ways with her dad. Yeah. And then uh, another uh, cool moment, a funny moment, is the friend proxy version of Owen. So she's trying to practice meeting up. But she knows it all. She sees a... Or no, she knows that Owen's in a. Uh, does she know that Owen's in an institution at that point? I no, don't know. she finds she it out after in the paper. Yeah. Okay. So she, but she's worried about meeting up with Owen, and so she gets a friend proxy to practice. I think that's yeah. what I got out of it. Uh, well, I mean, or uh, she just, perhaps she doesn't think she can contact him because she doesn't know anything about him because since they're, you know, they just she knows yeah. the first name. Yeah. Um, so she's she, trying to get some sort of closure, or you know, express parts of the relationship. So the friend proxy version of Owen has read the file, and in his mind, Owen is like totally ready to commit. 
to her. So he's yeah. like, I'm going to propose. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to push this along. And she's like, wait, that, that, what are you doing? That's not what Owen would do. You're a bad friend proxy. Um, and she leaves him in the dust, basically. Um, as she well, sees the paper. Visit, yeah. right? She's the paper. She sees that the trial happened and that he's been institutionalized. And she goes to break him out of the institution, uh, which she does. Uh, after having another conversation, they have their like more fitting conversation. Yeah. Uh, which we'll also talk about because uh, I thought it was a little, again, kind of almost like the, what we were just saying with the Hank Azaria thing. It just kind of iced stuff over a little bit. Well, I think, over it. I think it uh, accepted a new sort of base of the relationship where uh, she's not going to leave him. If he gets a little weird, she'll accept that. And, you know, and they can just try to stay in each other's lives because that's what they want. Um, and they, they escape the institution and they drive off together and that's basically the end. Although they're totem animals. I mentioned uh, they show up at the end. Little Falcon is riding the little pooper scooper thing and then the little lost dog is hanging out yeah, with him. Yeah, I think you have a pet or pets in your house. Uh, I do. Yeah, I don't. I have a, I have a totem cat. Why I don't care. All right. Anyway. All right. But anyway. you know, if you but that was the last you know, scene of the you know. of the show. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm That's how important it was to you <laughs> <laughs> and to the showrunner and director. Obviously, yeah, okay. obviously, right. it is obvious. All right. Anyway, there you go. Um, but uh, da, 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 da. okay, so they have their their she she sneaks in to the institution yes. and they have their talk. And he's basically like, he says something equivalent of, my my mind doesn't work right. Yes. And she says, no one's does. Yes, he does say that. Um, and it just, and then they kind of just go on from there. It just feels a little, now, I get what you're saying. It could be that the implication of that whole bit is, I'm not leaving you. I know what you're trying to say. The subtext of what you're saying is, so go away because I'm just going to ruin our relationship. But there also is a sense of he could, st <laughs> I guess you, did he get cured by this experiment? Because if not, and he actually still has some legit emotional problems, just saying everybody's got problems. It's kind of a way of glossing over the fact that this guy might have like legit problems that he needs help with. Sure. And instead of like saying, you don't need this help. Let's just go off on a road trip right. together. Well, not in that environment, right? Not under the, you know, of the um, sort of... Um, the involuntary the, state. Yeah, they're like, oh, well, because you've uh, threatened these people, you know, to do harm to them or whatever, you should be in this institution. Oh, right. thanks. He hasn't I can't wait to that. get that therapy for that. <laughs> right. You know. Phew. Stop sending anthrax <laughs> yeah. to important public figures. Okay. <laughs> One day at a right. time. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't doing it today. Good. Well, tomorrow we'll work on that again. <laughs> I got you. Good point. Um, yeah, and and so um, you know, and yeah, I mean, in my mind, actually, I wouldn't mind seeing more of uh, Annie and uh, Owen, um, even though it doesn't seem like we're going to get more of them because, uh, you know, the most extreme parts of their personality that were keeping them apart, or uh, you know, they're like saying, let's forget that and let's see what kind of relationship we can have but we're not going to see it they will yeah. <laughs> I mean they're like leaving they're going on a little trip together to Salt Lake City you know to visit um, the you know, tomb sometimes I guess, people system. going on trips can be interesting but no we don't need to see that's true they kind of did cut off <laughs> now that said I could guess what's going to happen because uh, they just broke Owen out of an, in, a mental institution where he was involuntarily uh, you know hospitalized right uh, and they did it during the day in front of a whole bunch of people. They yes. drove away. The guys got their license plate, I'm yes. sure. Yes. Uh, and they're still in the same truck, yeah. the old white pickup truck. They're going to get uh, arrested is Will what's they? going to happen. If they call to have them get arrested, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying they'll get picked up. And he's going to go back to the institution. Right. And she's probably going to have to do some kind of court I wonder, though, what kind of, for, uh, perhaps. Breaking I wonder, though, how... Well, they you know they prosecute those sort of things. Right. Like if okay. they were to leave the state, you know, which they're their, trying to do, right? 
So if they were to leave the state, would there be a mechanism as strong to get them to, you know, to come back? I think I think the answer is yes in that situation. But I mean, I'm just saying it seems like they're on a little bit of fool's gold at the moment. They're like, we're happy. We're driving <laughs> along. We just drove away yes. from security guards. All right. But they, uh, somebody who sent anthrax supposedly to a bunch of public figures who just broke out of the mental institution, uh, there's going to be oh. a call for somebody like that. He's loose. Yeah. yeah. Go get him. Okay, I forgot about the answer. He got broken out. Yeah. Um, so I just feel like mm. the I guess next it, episode is... I guess is it's important enough to actually have a... Take me in. Have a, have a newspaper article about it. Um, you know, because... Yeah. Why... It just... You know, some guy who was a jackass, although it was pretty disgusting what he did. So yeah, so let's go to that. So the... <laughs> the trial, which is obviously the centerpiece of Owen's... Uh, ner- uh, arc. Yes. Uh, will he or won't he help the family? Yes. Um, even though they played suck, in, uh, played clearly, in, clearly. Played in pretty much all of his uh, simulations. Suck. Yes. Including the last one where he's yeah. snorry. I mean, he's at a he's at a hearing yep. because he, you know, and, and they want him to say, I did this yep. horrible thing. Yep. So, uh, first of all, we learn it's not a criminal hearing. No. It's a civil hearing. Yes. It's very different. It is. So while he, he's preparing for the trial, there's apparently a call comes in. Oh, they have a settlement offer. Uh, what kind of offer? Very generous. No. <laughs> We're not going to take this their offer because it would stain the family. Yes. All right. First of all, BS because settlements are almost literally always have a... Uh, a, a secrecy clause that go with yes, them. Yes. So you would pay them some nominal fee, uh, and no one could talk about it. So it wouldn't really do. I mean, people no. sign that stuff all the time, no. and you could always say, "Well, it was a nuisance no. suit, and we just paid to get rid of it." It would yes. not inflict. It affect In our the current political environment, we can see how much someone can benefit from buying someone else off, <laughs> right. where the. Uh, it's not implicating that person at all. Yep. It's like, oh no, uh, clearly it's it, the person's innocent. Otherwise, why would well, they have paid them off? No, you're right. <laughs> it's what, a, it's yeah. just annoying. You're so annoying. You're annoying. Here, it takes a bunch of money. It takes money. <laughs> um, but point being, the stakes are lower for the family than I guess I thought it was originally. Where yes. it's like Jed's going to jail right. unless you get him right. out. Yes. Instead, it's like. Oh, we got to pay some money, which we have plenty of. Yes. But no, you go and testify. So, so the stakes are low, or and once we see the evidence against Jed, it's like, who cares what yeah. Owen says? Yes. Jed is going to be uh, they're good. the jury's going to find against Jed no matter what. There's a there's a videotape, and it's clear. it might have been better if it was a little blurrier or yeah. farther away, but it's not. It's clear. It's like a it's like a three-quarter body shot. He's standing like this. Yeah. We see her, no, the, the not employee. Not for the incident that happened. Yeah, so the incident, we don't see him then. The incident involves <laughs> her, him forcing an employee to urinate on him. Yes. Uh, which, again, is somewhat similar to modern events. Oh, yes. The, uh, That's true. Uh, we'll just <laughs> leave it at that. So We will. We will. Um, but, but it, yeah, the videotape is incredibly clear. And we know it's taken in the office. We see this woman who is the one who's uh, uh, trying to get the money, who's suing. She's obviously there. She runs away, and he's like in victory. Like, yeah, I did this. Me, <laughs> Jed. Um, and so who cares what, I mean, they're trying to have Owen say, no, he was with me all night. Couldn't be him on the tape. Okay. I mean, I, I feel like, is, it, is there a remote possibility that a juror could say, well, the brother said he was there, I suppose. But I would say hugely probable that no matter what Owen says, Jed's going to have to pay a whole bunch of cash. Yes. So it didn't really matter. Like the stakes on, his, on well, whether or not he to, said anything. You would have to believe that um, the family was not aware that there was a tape. Okay. <laughs> Maybe going in, they're like, we don't know the evidence. difference between our world and their world where you can just throw out evidence at any point... That can damage. Oh, surprise! Oh, we have more evidence. Plus, we if you thought. were going to make a settlement offer, you would say part of your settlement negotiation would be, by the way, we've got this tape. I mean, you wouldn't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. So they, no. I don't see like a here, scenario where they don't the know. Here's the tape. 
right. and, and yeah. thank you for the money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the only copy. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to trust you with the original. Yeah. <laughs> for some reason, it's a VHS. Okay. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but again, this is another world. It's another they world. Have, sure. Um, uh, what is it? They don't have the Statue of Liberty. They have the Kick-Ass Statue of Liberty. So I, <laughs> you're right, oh. the Kick-Ass Statue. So I feel like... I think it was maybe a flaw in the writing that just messed up the trial stakes. Because it just felt like, first of all, paying a, paying money wasn't really necessarily the worst thing that this family would have to do. And it, it kind of didn't, there's so much evidence against him that it didn't really matter what Owen was going to say. And I mean, obviously, we just saw a massive, again, in real life terms here, a he, he said, she said. Yes. But... It wasn't he says, she said, with an incredibly no. uh, demonstrative video no. of different angles. No, no, no. Yeah. And I mean, so no, no. there's a lot of evidence. Yes. Anyway, so Owen doesn't go along with it. No. Says, that's my brother and the thing. Yeah. Jed, I guess, has to pay money. Yeah. Probably a lot of money. And is vindictive. <laughs> so it's not, I mean, there's really no, doesn't help him at all. It's mm. not like, oh, if I screw over my brother... I'll get a lesser, you know, yeah, judgment no, against no, me. No, no, it's just, no, it's no. pure vengeance, yeah. which we get. I mean, that yeah. guy seems like the guy who yeah. would do that. Oh, right? yeah. But oh, he does yeah. it. Yeah, he does it, yes. <laughs> and he so, does. pure spite uh, sets up his brother. Um, and so, uh, so yes. Anyway, that was, um, this is kind of interesting. I, I just felt like maybe they missed the the circumstances of the trial yeah. a little bit. That they could have, they could have made that a little a little clear. Um, well, yeah, I mean, you know, if they had acknowledged all along that he, that Owen knew that he was doing it merely to support the family's deluded efforts to <laughs> avoid, and, and, and futile efforts to avoid uh, responsibility for the, uh, for the other brother. They were willing to, to sacrifice the younger brother's reputation just so they could do something stupid if it was clear from the very beginning maybe well maybe we'd just be like why aren't you running away in the first place <laughs> why are you sticking around but you know i but you know if if you know you could I, I still argue i think too there's room in the show to have that be the case and he's just so resigned to his role yeah. in the family and perhaps desperate for them to accept him that he's willing to do something that's clearly detrimental to him yeah. Um, and so the the Annie saying goodbye to her sister moment, I said I'd talk about that, so we'll jump back to that real fast. Um, the other bone he has a bit. I, <laughs> well, part of it, I just felt like it wasn't it wasn't written as well as it could be. I, I mean, part of it, I remember one of the lines was something like, I think the sister says, I mean, you just got to say what you mean. And then there's like a, why didn't why didn't you take my picture? Well, and essentially the answer is, well, I just didn't want you to leave. And it was like, yeah, I guess I guess I knew that way long ago. I knew that back when you didn't take the picture. I get it. Annie didn't know that. I don't that. think you so. I don't think you do. Get okay. It. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you get it. I guess it's a revelation to Annie. Well, it's but her it's admitting like, it. It's, okay. you know, part of what, you know, in therapy that you want to do is say, okay, this is the reason why I did things. I did, I was mean and cruel to you, and I'm having trouble accepting the reasons why I was mean and cruel to you, or at least I'm ashamed of the reasons why. And to accept the fact that, no, it's because I was jealous, I was angry, and saying those things out loud. Maybe you should have said it that way. It might have actually been a little bit better. Um, it, just, it just felt simple. I don't know, like, I get, that's all it took? I mean, certainly, um, uh, I feel like in scenes like this that happen when you have, uh, in this show, things that, you know, are clearly really insane, you know, so all the things that they, all these behaviors that people do, rather than be honest with each other, it can definitely feel anticlimactic and um, odd when people just say, well, here, this is why I did it. You could just feel, especially strange. in the context of that episode, because there were so many comedic beats. I mean, they had the "I'm Snorri," you know, that thing was going on, yes. and then you had the 
you blinded me with toxic yes, love. Yes, and yes, then, yes. I, you know, they pulling levers, blind guy. And like, there was a lot of yeah. very campy, mm. uh, over the top, I would say, absurdist, Three Stooges style comedy sure. going on. And then to come in with this, I think that also helped kind of undercut it a little bit because it just didn't. It didn't resonate. I with me. can accept, even though I was fine with it, but part of me did think that you could say those scenes are played as read. Like, okay, in this part of the script, it's supposed to be, uh, be uh, an understanding, expressing an understanding for each other. Okay, these are the actual feelings we're having. Okay, we're done with that. Now back to the craziness. Yeah, yeah. I so, hear you. I, I guess so it's possible it that... It could be effective, and it, I don't know. For me, it just well, wasn't in that moment. Right. I mean, you know, for me, I, in a way, I was sort of... I did feel as if I noticed that about it, where it's like, oh, this is like a lot of other shows, where it's like... And they put the, the music underneath it, that kind of maudlin music. The part where it's supposed to be, these are our actual emotions, and now we've learned a lesson, are actually the parts they put the least effort into. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. And right, we're we done with that? Wrap it. All right, let's go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got to get to okay, the... Okay, yeah, we got... Uh, so, uh, you, you, the computer talking to you itself. You love me, I love you. Okay, okay bye. <laughs> Look, it's Hank Azaria. He's in the back window. Um, so, uh, oh, one thing, um, Easter egg was the uh, when we see oh, Annie yeah. at the at the trial, she's holding up, she's smoking a pipe, which was a reference, I believe, back to the previous episode, the "Sine uh, pa un peep." The "This is not a pipe" reference, which was "This is not a drill." Anyway, no, no, no. So she's like, "See, we're in an image. We're in a virtual version of this. This isn't real." Uh, I thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, oh, um, I almost let us without discussing something. Um, some people have suggested that perhaps that final scenario is not real. Okay, the final scenario of them breaking out of the yes. uh, institution. Ah. What do you think about that, sir? I mean, it does have the wacky hijinks quality of the simulations. Right. I don't feel as if there was the level or at least the style of crazy crap happening around them as it, when they were in the simulations. True. Also, unlike the simulation, I mean, okay, we're assuming that their lives before they went to the experiment were real. Yes, we are. The fact that they're more or less back in their real world yes. that we saw them before the pre-experiment yes. suggests that they're not in the simulation anymore. Yeah. They're not pirates. I would, you know what I mean? Yeah, they're, right. they're not like... right. Yeah, one thing I did think possible, especially when we saw that, uh, I mean, I mentioned it several times, this whole, um, you know, well, the whole ad buddy and everything and the, and the technology and the, um, and the uh, kick-ass uh, Statue oh, of yeah, Liberty yeah. and everything, uh -huh. it made it kind of like, is this a simulation? You could have thought maybe, uh, the whole you know, thing. yeah. But if you never say that it's a simulation, yeah, then, <laughs> then, it's, then it's, I would say it's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and if it is, yeah. and you're just, I mean, you're just, you could say anything. I mean, you could just, yes, yes. Sure, it's a simulation. Yeah. No, it's not. All right, yeah. equal evidence for both. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I guess you could maybe put the ambiguity of it as. Maybe the whole thing's a simulation. Right. Maybe I mean, it's all in his head. I mean, one thing that, you know, the fact that... Uh, I'm going to make it another comparison to another movie, which is um, Total Recall. Okay, right. Because that one ends ambiguously, for sure. Yes, where um, early on, or at some point, they, they say, you know, oh, we could live this, you know, happy world or whatever. And, and you know, at some point when he's... And then he thinks he gets out of the system, but right. he, is he or is he not? Is he still in the system or right. is he out of it? Exactly. So, um, you know, wow. yeah. So in this particular thing, uh, in the maniac thing, one thing he says, oh, what if you could be lost in a fantasy, what would that fantasy be, she asked him. And it'd be us He's like, escaping, and I'm laughing. Uh, and it is true, it's the... I think one of the first times we see him smile mm. in the real world is in that car. Because mm. he's like, yeah. he's holding the puppy, and he's actually, I'm like, oh, that's, yeah. it, it was so odd to see him smile that I registered, yeah. like, oh, he's smiling. Yeah. Huh, that's a good point. He does, he sets up what happens yeah, at the end. Right. Now, maybe that's it's just the common, writing. It's a common trope to do that, yeah. though, where it's like, what would make you happy? Much like um, uh, another. Actually, people have questioned whether this is a real ending either, is um, uh, Dark Knight Rises. 
um, where you've got Michael Caine oh, saying, yes. you know yeah. what I want? I'd love to be yeah. overseas, and yep. I'm sitting in this yep. little yep. market, yep. and yep. I look yep. over, and I see you yep. sitting, and, and, and we acknowledge each other, and you walk away. Yep. And that's exactly what happens yeah, at yeah, the end, yeah. and yeah. it's like, wait, is that real, or was that just Michael Caine yeah. hoping that's yeah. what this yeah. is? Anyway, yeah. um, I took it as it was real, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I can understand Maybe how people suckers. might. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, if you obviously uh, out there have a thought as to whether or not that last scene is real or not, what you probably have to say is the trial isn't real, then as well. Yeah, it's not like and we had some point, and what makes the scene with her father more suspect. Yeah, exactly. Maybe <laughs> all the things we had con- problems with, we had a problem oh, with the trial, go. we had a problem with Angus area. Oh, it's easily fixed. <laughs> Boop, it wasn't real. <laughs> Oh, there you go. All right. Oh, genius. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so yes, um, if that's if that's your thought out there, uh, let us give us some uh, evidence as you think mm. perhaps the ending is not uh, real. I mean, obviously, the fact that there's a there's a hawk on top of a little pooper scooper thing, mm. and this little lost dog has been lost for seven years, oh, yeah. running down a country road. Mm. Why is the pooper scooper thing in down a country road? I yeah. mean, so uh, uh, uh. that in itself is a fantastic Fake. element. Fake. But, um, I like the it's fact that all they, in his mind. I'm assuming it's, it wasn't CGI that they actually trained a falcon to oh, ride I on this you. little it's much easier, droid, much thing. cheaper too. Yeah, this looked funny. Train. A, uh, sit there, hawk. <laughs> Um, we tied him, but uh, yeah. Anyway, that was Maniac. Yes. You know what? I mean, the show is it was uh, ambitious. Yes. Uh, creative. Yes. Uh, had a lot of cool visual moments in yeah, it as well, it and uh, I enjoyed watching I it. I did. Yeah, I liked uh, particularly Jonah Hill and uh, Emma Stone. I enjoyed quite a bit. So. Uh, and actually, I enjoyed. S- oh, and uh, um, Justin Thoreau. Justin Thoreau, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. I thought yes, he did yes, a, yes. a good job. And I didn't. I don't think I've mentioned um, uh, Sally Field, reminiscent of Soap Dish. I think it was. Called. Oh yeah, the the one with the where she's a soap star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 That was a uh, that was a good movie as well. Um, so, so there's a lot to like about this. Yes. I don't think it's a perfect series, mm-hmm. and we just talked about some of the flaws we thought it had with the ending. But, um, but yeah, it was it was you worth see, watching. It's the first work I think of this director that you know you could say he's the creative force behind. So it makes me. Uh, well, you're talking about Kerry Fukunaga. Yeah, so uh, it makes me interested in what what he does next. Okay, I mean, he did True Detective. Right, but that. You know, I think he was the director on that and not the creative force. Okay. You know, because it was based on, a, you know, the work of an author. I see what you're saying. You're saying, in other words, he helped create the world and then direct it as well. He wasn't, the, I don't think he was a, technically the showrunner. Of this? Yeah. I think he was. I, had, I thought somebody else's name as a showrunner at one point, but, uh, maybe but I, think, I think you're right that he collaborated yes. on the idea, not yes. just simply, here, you, point I the camera so. there and I shoot that. So. I think so. Um, also, it's a it's a departure for him in terms of it's a comedic yes, bent that right. I don't think we've seen him do before. Right, Especially yeah. if, he, if he's going to do James Bond, well, I yes. don't see him doing it like this. I mean, if it is, that will be interesting. <laughs> Daniel Craig rescuing a lemur. Yeah. <laughs> yes. it, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah. So anyway, there was there was stuff to like. Um, I'm glad we we chatted about this. Um, you know, it's not a. Emmy Award winning series, no. but it is uh, it's worthwhile and unique. So thank you, Maniac. We appreciate it. And uh, we're going to be back. I'm probably going to do a little Lord of the Rings. Okay. Uh, Paul will be mysteriously gone for that Lord of the Rings thing. Um, but we'll be back <laughs> next week talking about Daredevil Season 3, which I'm really excited about. You don't want to uh, get together to talk about uh, uh, Discovery? Oh, right. We'll talk about that, too. We just watched the, um, what do you call it? A short. The, yeah, the, short, the, short the Star Trek tre- shorts, whatever. Star Trek. Short Treks. Trek shorts that are made out of uh, Star Trek. Okay. Uh, it is a, It's called Runaway. It takes place on Star Trek Discovery, and it's uh, Tilly confronts a, a stowaway alien, basically. That's and half of it. He's actually already, like, Recapped more. I've recapped it because it's 15 <laughs> minutes long. I've actually, and that's it. <laughs> um, no, but yeah, we'll, we will talk about that uh, as we lead into eventually in the near future, uh, Discovery comes back 
with a new season with Captain Pike, and, and that looks really interesting. And yeah, eventually, it comes down until next month, actually, in November. Okay. It being what? The second one, the one that they previewed. Okay, so the, the next, next. Okay, so there is another short coming yes. out, but it's a, a few weeks from now. I guess it is, yeah. Um, so, uh, yes, we will talk about the first of the shorts that came out. And, uh, yeah, so there's Star Trek Discovery, Daredevil, Lord of the Rings, and my buddy Dave, uh, who I talked about Star Wars with uh, recently, uh, wants to do more of those. So I will uh, uh, take him up on that. And I feel like the next one of those we do might be theories on how Episode Nine would end. Uh, oh. Uh, would be ah, oh. Anyway. Ah. So, a lot of stuff. Subscribe if you feel so inclined. And we'll see you next time, everybody.